So we're starting with two coats of white gel polish and we are also going to top coat this with a no wipe top coat. Now the reason why I'm using a no wipe top is because I'm going to be using this um, pot of magic from Glitter Arty Nails, it's called Fairy Magic. It's a little bit like a chrome, gives a mother of pearl effect and that needs to be uh, burnished into a no wipe top. So using my sponge I'm going to pat the flakes into the, the top coat first, which is obviously dry, but you need to push that onto the nail and then wipe and wipe the excess off and rub that into a shine. So you need to keep working this, fill in any gaps and keep rubbing it. You'll play with your no wipe tops and see which one works best with your chrome. I find some better than others. So once that's gone on, I'm just going to top coat this because I want a, a shiny surface to do my ombre on. I, I find it blends a little bit better. So I've got my gel polish in bright pink and bright orange, very summery. And what I'm going to do is ombre it. Now, like I say, I've used a no wipe top. That nice shiny surface will help me ombre. So I'm going to take some gel polish on my gel liner. And I'm going to fill in the first half of the box that I want to create. I don't want a perfectly square box. I want it to look like a bit of paper's been torn. Um, and, it's, and it's been torn out, the shape has. So I'm going to do it a little bit uh, frilly, a bit uh, haphazard. So I leave a small gap between the two colours. A tiny, tiny gap. Don't over flood the gel polish because there'll be too much and you'll find it really difficult to work with. So just put enough on to give you a good layer. Also remember that the first go, the first coat is awful. Okay, so this is the first coat. We are going to repeat this for a second coat, which I'm not going to show. But as you can see, I'm tapping. Tapping and swirling the two colours together, but only moving in a certain band. So I'm just tapping, tapping and working. And then I repeat that process and we're ready to put the design on top. So this is my palm tree. I'm using gel paint because I like it to stay. I don't want it to self-level or spread. So I'm starting my palm tree and I'm using the very tip of a long liner to do the leaves on the palm. I want it to be moving. I want it to be, I don't want it to mould into one big black dot. That's why I've used gel paint. And I'm using the paint that's already on the branches that I've splayed out to make the leaves. I'm not adding any extra paint at all. I'm not overloading it. And then I'm going to use my black gel paint again to just make my trunk a little bit thicker at the bottom and add a few coconuts, coconut shadows to the middle. My outline I want again straight lines. Now you can use spider gel for this but I haven't got any black spider gel at the moment so I'm using my black gel paint and I'm doing a really rustic frame around the palm tree and I'm going to cure that and then I'm going to go in with my gold spider gel just to add a little bit of elegance to it and another colour and another level. This will then be cured and then top coated and that's the first design done. Uh, very Club Tropicana, I'm sure you'll agree. But I'm just trying to show you the easy salon viable ways. So this is number two. So I'm going to do a strip of ombre down the middle now. Now these are cheap nail stickers from eBay. And I'm going to place them on down the centre of the nail. Now... I don't want to push it down too much because I want almost a frilly edge on it. I don't want it to be perfectly straight, but I do want a bit of a frilly edge. But this is just going to help me guide my ombre down the middle. So I'm just popping that on to a white gel paint. And then I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to colour block my gel polish, leaving a very small gap in between each. Now this time, because it's only a small area, I am using a little bit more gel polish so I don't have to do two layers. I only am going to be doing one layer here. So I'm filling in with my orange, leaving that little gap. And then repeating the process. So I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to use my brush tapping backwards and forwards along my desired band where I want my colour to mix, to ombre. 
And this is so quick for the salon that you'll, you can actually do this with, with a, your actual gel polish brush, but it's such a faff to keep cleaning it. So I just do it this way instead, and it makes life so much easier. So just a little tap, keep swirling and tapping and swirling and tapping and moving. And it will all mix together in that particular band and just create a nice ombre. I'm going to remove these tapes now with my tweezers when I'm happy and clean any mess up that, that it's left with a little bit of isopropyl. I'm not too fussed because I want it to be rugged. I'm then going to put the same kind of frame as I did around my first design. This is black gel paint, so it's nice and thick. It is lovely and pigmented and will not self-level and will not move. So it will stay in that nice straight line. Again, you can do this with spider gel, uh, but I haven't got any. I keep saying that. I haven't got any black at the moment. So I'm going to do these li just little rustic frame lines with a long brush. Remember, long lines are done better with a long brush. Don't overload your brush with paint. This is where your fine line painting practice comes in. Um, it is the basis and the fundamental for all of your nail art, to be fair. So practice, practice, practice. So how to do a hibiscus flower. So I start with three dots. One higher and then two either side. So there's three dots. And then I slightly blend, clean my brush off and slightly blend those dots together. So I've got no paint on my brush now. I'm just using what is already on the nail. And I'm going to drag out, I'm going to pull out little eyelash strands to make each petal. So there's your first hibiscus petal. And I'm just going to continue doing this and building up this hibiscus flower. So three dots, one higher than the others, join them together and pull out little eyelash curves. Don't make them straight, make them curved. Give the flowers some movement. So I'm going to do three petals, always an odd number, um, I think it looks aesthetically better. So three dots, one higher than two, join them together and pull out using the gel that's there. And make them come to the centre. And I'm going to just kind of do two half petals at the back, um, because you can't really put much there. And then I'm going to do the little Damon, I think it's called, in the middle. And I'm going to do that by just doing um, a line pressure at the end, lifting my brush up and bringing it to the centre. Putting the pressure on will make the end of that bigger um, and then release the pressure for the rest of the stem. So I'm going to fill out this side completely with the hibiscus flowers. When you're searching for these on Pinterest, if you want to do something in black or, or one colour on top of white or one colour on top of black, search for silhouette. Because a silhouette of something, you can then take that design and use your fine line practice to create just a line picture of the object that you're trying to create. That's how I find my pictures. So I just type in silhouette um, hibiscus flower and then these little gems come up. So I've just done a, another flower, three petals, as you can see, and I'm going to pop another stamen, pressure and release, and little tiny dots with the end of my brush. Like I keep saying, it's really important to practice your fine lines. It's the fundamental basis for everything that you do on nail art. So getting that practice in and doing this is definitely a way to train your hand to, to paint. It's all about pressure. It's all about putting pressure on and releasing, putting more pressure on to create thicker lines, reducing the pressure to make thinner lines. So I'm just going to add some little dots in there as well. And I'm going to repeat, I'm going to cure that, but I'm going to repeat all of this on the other side. But because I'm using gel paint, I don't actually have to cure it, but I'm so haphazard <laughs> that I do because I'll put my finger in it. So I'm just repeating, as you can see, on the other side, my hibiscus flowers. And you can do these any way you want to. And then what I'm going to do is add some more spider gel just down that centre panel, just to give it a little bit of something else. And there you have the second design. So the third design, I'm going to show you how to do a complete ombre on a full nail. So half of my nail, I'm going to do a, a diagonal ombre here. 
with pink and the other half with the orange, leaving that teeny tiny gap down the middle. I'm going to get my brush and do tapping and swirling along my band. So I pick a band, it's probably about half a centimetre, and I move my brush, swirling, dotting, swirling, dotting. I'm just going to, along that band, just make my paints mix together. It's a really quick way of getting that ombre without creating too much problem. Now I'm using the gel liner from Flo and Ellie because it's nice and thick and it holds a lot of gel in the end so that it, it keeps that paint in the brush and it really helps with your ombre. So I'll do two coats because the first coat, as I say, is always awful. So here's the second coat coming in now and you can see I'm going to follow the same path as before, leaving that tiny, tiny gap in the middle just to allow me to mix and ombre that paint. It's the smallest gap. If you leave too big a gap, you're going to find it really hard. So there we are, look, just tapping and moving my brush, tapping very quickly, swirling and tapping, mixing together those two colours in the gap and either side of the gap. It's about half a centimetre I use, up and down, backwards and forwards. And there you have your blend, your ombre, really quick and really easy. I'm going to add black tropical leaves to my design now using black gel paint again because it doesn't self level, it doesn't spread, it stays where you put it. So these are going to be our little palm leaves again. Search for silhouette, you'll be surprised at what it brings up. Sorry about my filming on this, I had to change phones. So I'm just popping three leaves on here and I'm going to cure that. And then I'm going to add wet no white top coat onto my nail. I've mixed a baby pink translucent gel at the side of me. While that's still wet I'm going to add that translucent baby pink gel into it and it's going to act as a blooming gel. It looks a little bit leopard printy. It's quite cool. It just gives it another texture. Um, and then I'm going to cure that and set it once it's finished its blooming and then I'm going to top coat with no white top. Once I've done that, I'm going to use my Mystic Nails Foil Gel once that top coat's cured. And I'm going to start painting the design over the top with the foil gel. Now, the reason why I've no white topped is because I don't want my foil to stick to anything underneath. I want a nice, clean canvas. So this foil gel is unbelievable. So you paint it on, you cure it, but what happens is, I find with some foil gels, it doesn't pick up all your foil. So you're left with black gaps, but this, wherever you put this foil gel, it will pick up your foil. You won't be left with any negative spaces. So I'm just using my foil gel. It's quite thick, a little bit thicker than gel paint, so you do have to work with it. Again, look at my pressure. When I want a thicker line, I'm, I'm pushing my brush down into the belly and making that thicker line. Everything's controlled with my hand and my wrist. And you can see I'm holding my brush like a pen. The closer you hold it to the end, the more control you have. Cure that and then remember to wipe the back of your foil with isopropyl to take the resin off. Rub, voila, no gaps, nothing on the background, no rogue bits of foil anywhere, just sticking to just where I wanted it on that foil gel. I'm going to top coat that now with no wipe again. Uh, you're only using thin layers, you're not soaking the poor thing and then we're going to cure that and that is your finished design now you can do this with any color so you know experiment a little but just be careful when you're ombre and don't do too much of a contrasting color because you will struggle to ombre so i hope you enjoy it tag me in anything that you do i want to see your fine lines i want to see you practicing and uh, enjoy the rest of the show guys thank you